everyone loves the excitement of a fishing tournament. But our tournaments, and game fish themselves, are threatened by hordes of aquatic invasive species. Let's stop them and protect our waters. How about hosting a boat washing station at your tournament? Like other boating activities, fishing tournaments risk transporting quagga mussels, round gobies, rusty crayfish, and other invasive species to new, uncontaminated lakes. These organisms can ruin the fishing in a lake. Eurasian water milfoil clogs the waters. Spiny water fleas stick to fishing lines. Quagga and zebra mussels can ultimately affect the walleye, bass, and other game fish that a lake supports. And the public often thinks that invasive species are spread by tournament anglers. Fishing tournament organizers and community groups can help protect our waters and the future of fishing tournaments. By acting now, tournament anglers and organizers may also avoid restrictive regulations in the future or play a role in developing regulations. One major step is hosting a station for washing boats. This can be done by tournament organizers, but it's also a great opportunity for community groups to participate in the tournament and perhaps raise some funds. These groups could be local fishing clubs, high school sports teams, scouts, 4-H clubs, and other organizations. A surefire way to avoid transporting aquatic invaders is to follow the clean, drain, dry guidance of the Stop Aquatic Hitchhikers campaign. But that requires five days to dry a boat between uses and not everyone can do that. That's where boat washing comes in. It does an even better job of preventing the spread of invasive species than just removing vegetation by hand and draining on board water. The goal of washing boats at a fishing tournament is to quickly and effectively inspect and clean as many boats as possible. Planning for a successful wash station starts well before the event. If you're a tournament organizer, train your own staff or work with local groups to obtain staffing. If you represent a community group, coordinate with tournament organizers to let them know you can do this and to ensure that they'll let you. You don't need a lot of equipment. One or two pressure washers, some towel or chamois, and, if possible, some signs. You'll also need a hand sprayer or two filled with a weak bleach solution of a half ounce of bleach per quart water or salt solution of two-thirds cup salt per gallon of water. You'll need people to staff the station. Someone to direct traffic, one or two people to inspect the boats before washing them, and one person for each pressure washer. Other people could help dry off the boat and collect donations. Meet with the members of the wash team ahead of time to briefly describe their roles and train them. Selecting a place for the wash station takes a little planning, but it gets easier as you get used to your tournament location. You need adequate approach space so drivers don't block traffic. Drivers must be able to move straight through the wash station and move out of the way when their boats are clean. One approach is to place the wash station near the parking area. Be sure to locate the station out of the way of other traffic. Boats can go from the ramp directly to the wash station if they want to, and then to the parking lot. Or boaters could park first and when they have time, then go to the wash station. Remember, boat washing is voluntary. You may not be able to wash every boat with this arrangement. If the boats will drive past the weigh-in stage, another approach is to position the wash station where the boats line up before they pass the weigh-in stage. This has the advantage of being able to wash every boat as it leaves the water. However, you won't be able to disinfect the boat's live wells because they'll have fish in them. In this case, you can station a person with a spray bottle well beyond the weigh-in stage.
or you can remind anglers to clean their live wells themselves. You can even put a reminder in the boat. You'll want to have a pressure washer stationed on both sides of the boat and trailer. The people doing the washing should wear eye protection and everyone should wear shoes with closed toes. If vehicles must drive over water hoses, protect the hoses with 2x4s or another arrangement. Have one person direct the boat into and out of the wash station. One boat can be washed while the trailer of the following boat is inspected. The people washing should move from the bow to the stern and across the transom in about 45 seconds. Keep the washer at a right angle to the boat and at least 12 inches from the hull surface so that you don't remove any decals. Move the sprayer from side to side, beginning at the gunnel and moving down the hull to the keel. Be sure to hit the trailer axle and cross members. When you're done with one area of the boat, move a few feet toward the stern and begin again, side to side, gunnel to keel. If you have only one pressure washer, spend 90 seconds washing down the hull. As one boat is being washed, you can inspect the trailer of the following boat. Vegetation often tangles on the axles, on wiring behind the fenders, and near the tail lights. This is also a good opportunity to spray down the live well of the second boat with the hand sprayer. When the pressure wash is completed, instruct the driver to pull forward. It's essential to keep the line moving. If anglers have to wait too long, they may leave without having their boat inspected or washed. The residual bleach and salt will not harm fish placed in the live well at the next event. The bleach will evaporate in 24 hours and salt reduces stress for freshwater fish. Always record the name of the tournament, the date, a contact person for the wash station, how many boats were washed, and what steps were taken. This documents your commitment to AIS prevention. It can also help identify ways to improve the process for the next time. Tournament organizers should promote the wash station during the event. An announcement at the rules meeting and during the weigh-in can also increase the anglers that use the station. Signage directing anglers to the wash station is also helpful. Hand out AIS information materials at the tournament rules meeting and at the wash station. This attention to aquatic invaders at tournaments will hopefully help anglers appreciate their responsibility beyond the tournament as well. For example, some anglers practice or pre-fish tournament waters before the tournament. Pre-fishing is generally beyond the control of tournament organizers, but it can just as easily spread invasive species. Only anglers who care about protecting all waters can prevent the spread of invasive species outside of fishing tournaments. A wash station will greatly reduce the chances of spreading invasive species. To reduce them even more, however, boats and trailers can be decontaminated professionally. This uses a specialized unit for washing with pressurized hot water and specialized nozzles to remove and kill invasive species from outside and inside the boat. This is the most effective boat wash option available, but it is more expensive than other options. It also requires trained staff and can take 20 minutes or longer per boat. This means far fewer boats can be treated. Because of this, unless a state requires it, professional decontamination should be optional for tournament participants. It's up to all of us to reduce the spread of aquatic invasive species. Please do your part by setting up a boat washing station at your fishing tournament. Doing so will help anglers keep the spread of aquatic invasive species to a minimum, allowing them to enjoy the exciting competition of fishing tournaments for many years. For more information, visit protectyourwaters.net and seagrant.wisc.edu. This video is a project of Wisconsin Sea Grant and the Great Lakes Sea Grant Network in partnership with the National Professional Anglers Association, Wildlife Forever, the Cabela's Masters Walleye Circuit, the Bass Federation, and the Walleye Federation. The project was funded by the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative and the National Sea Grant Office.